Now looking at the basic configuration of BGP, I've taken two routers here. I've given you some IP addresses. I know they're on the same subnet here. It really doesn't make a difference. Just imagine that the internet is in between. On the left-hand side, we've got a router configured for BGP Autonomous System 65101. Now you can see a basic configuration there. There's no synchronization. We're gonna log our neighbor changes. And by the way, we've defined the neighbor. The neighbor's 208.50.1.2, and they're in Autonomous System 65102. So let's go over to the other side here, router BGP 65102, that's the autonomous system. And then when I define the neighbor here, 208.50.1.1 is in remote AS 65101. So you can see how the autonomous system numbers in the neighbor statement point to the remote autonomous system on the other side. This is what we would call eBGP or external BGP because both of these neighbors are in different autonomous systems. Let's go ahead and slide this up here and look at the command line as we view a basic BGP neighbor. So I'm gonna do the show IP BGP summary command here. And in the output, what we see in this summary is I have a neighbor, 208.50.1.2. Now we're looking at this from the perspective of the router on the left-hand side. So it sees the neighbor on the right-hand side. It sees the version, it's version four. It sees the autonomous system is 65102. And over on the far right-hand side, you can see state slash prefix received. Now zero is the number of prefix received. So he hasn't sent me any prefixes, but what's more important to me is that state. You'll notice that the state is blank here. That's actually a good thing in our summary output, right? But that is the summary information for an established BGP neighbor. Let's look at a more detailed output. This is the output of the show IP BGP neighbors command. Now, if I had more than one neighbor, then I'd have to probably scroll through this list. But you'll notice here that I also can see the BGP state and that the state is established. So BGP goes through its own states in addition to the state of the TCP connection. So the first thing that would have to happen with BGP is we would have to go through the three-way handshake and establish a TCP session, and then BGP can actively negotiate the neighbor and establish the session. So that's the end result. That's what we want to end up seeing is that we are established with a neighbor. So here's the output from the debug IP TCP transactions as well as debug IP BGP events. Now you can see the difference between them in the output. It'll either say TCP or it'll say BGP and you'll know which came from which debug. But what's interesting here is the TCP debug tells me that I went from being in a listen state to a SYN received. Notice the direction of the ports, 179, sending a message to 208.50.1.2 on 49349. And then you'll notice here that we are sending a SYN. That's a TCP SYN packet. You can see the sequence numbers and acknowledgements. So that's kind of cool. And then here you can see that we went from SYN received to established in that connection. So the point is that we go through this state of three-way handshake and then establishing the TCP connection. Once we establish that TCP connection, then you can see that BGP actually had an adjacency change with a neighbor. That's the very bottom line there. And that that neighbor 208.50.1.2 is now up. So this is important for us in the CCIE lab exam because we want to make sure that our BGP adjacencies are up. We want those neighbors to be up, and this could get tricky for us if we've got firewalls or IPS or different devices in the path that are doing any sort of filtering. So we want to be aware of the ports that are used and how the establishment takes place.